spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God, you do not belong to yourself. How many are so quick? You're starting to see where this is going. You're like, man, it was better when it was just a history lesson. How come you have to go all New Testament on me? Do you not realize that your body is the temple for the Holy Spirit? And when there's a temple, there's a gate. And when there's a gate, there's gatekeepers. Amen? Amen. So your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Which brings me to point number two. Guard the gate. Proverbs 4.23 says, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. We need to start guarding the gates of of our heart. And we've been talking about the heart for a number of weeks now. And the heart is, remember, where's your heart at? It's in your head. Mark 7, 20, 22, 20 through 22 says, It is what comes from inside that defiles you. From within, out of a person's heart, comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, lustful desires, envy, Slander, pride, and foolishness. All these vile things come from within. They are what defile you. So what he's saying is your heart is in your head. From your heart comes evil thoughts. And we know that we are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And we need to start guarding or becoming gatekeepers of our own heart. Three responsibilities of a gatekeeper. Know when to guard your heart. Know what, who to allow in your heart and know what and who the gate needs to be shut and left outside of your heart. Amen? Amen. I teach marriages this all the time. People don't like it because it doesn't work within the social norms of our world. But you and your wife or you and your husband get married. You draw a little tiny circle around that. And everyone that adds value to that circle, you let in. And everyone that doesn't, you let out. I don't care what you call them and I don't care if you're related to them. Did you get that? Mom doesn't get in unless her intentions and motives are to build up. Amen. Amen? Amen. Dad doesn't get in unless her motives and intentions are to build up. If not, gate is closed. Amen? Amen. Hey, we come over. We brought a lot of food. Oh, really? <laughs> Mexican food. <laughs> the gate is open. So we need to realize that God has called us to be keepers of the gate. And we make excuses why we let the wrong people or the wrong things in and why we keep the wrong things out. But it really comes back to the controlling preference. Remember, your heart is your ultimate goal. Your heart is the ultimate preference of your mind, which means if really all you want is your own happiness, if it came down to it, you would take the happiness of your wife and children to get it. You wouldn't say it, but you would do it because your ultimate preference is me and what I deserve and to be happy. Mm. But when you get saved, we put Jesus on the throne of our hearts and our heart changes or we renew our mind and now the goal becomes whatever glorifies Jesus. So that comes if I'm here to bless my family at some sacrifice to me, I sacrifice it because my ultimate goal is to glorify God. Amen? Amen. See, that's the hard thing. That's why the cross took place. That's why you must die daily is because your own emotions, desires to have what you want will come into the very conflict with what God's called you to do and what you're to accomplish. Don't ever marry somebody that's not accountable to somebody else and to Jesus. Because when it hits the fan, and it will, if you can't call anybody that'll put them in check, you're in a bad place. You can't tell you how many times, we need to see counselor. I ain't gonna see no counselor. You know what that means? I'm going to do what I want on your life. Nobody can have a conversation with me. They'll go, no, if Jesus wants to tell me something, he will. He's been talking to you for years. But the gate has been closed. The 
Bible says he who isolates himself rages against all wise counsel. I don't want to talk to anybody. No one's going to tell me what to do. Gate is closed. Yeah, but they just want to come pray for us. Gate is closed. I'll deal with this on my own. I'm going to go out and hang out with the boys and we'll have a discussion about what I should do. <laughs> so what you allow in your heart will reveal itself in your life eventually. You can hide it for a while. We talked about that in Affections too. It's called camouflage, a.k.a. lying. I just want to serve Jesus. What about this? The devil made me do it. The devil's not the gatekeeper of your heart. You are. Look at the person next to you say, you're a gatekeeper. <laughs> See, we can't blame everything on God and the devil. When it comes down to our choice, we have to realize we are responsible for what we let in and what we don't allow. Amen? Amen. It's quiet in here. I try to smile a lot. <laughs> if you allow greed in your heart, you'll become a greedy person. If you allow hate in your heart, you'll become a hateful person. If you allow lust in your heart, you will become a lustful person. What you allow in your gate will give birth in your life. You cannot ignore it. You cannot hide it. Eventually, it will work its way out because the heart, above all else, guard the heart. For out of it comes the issues of life, the course of life, the wellspring of life, whatever version you like. But what you let in will come out. You can tell everybody what you want, but what you let in will come out into your life. People go, well, you don't know. You don't know me. Yeah, I do. I can look at your life. Because that reflects what's in your mind. If someone asks you, what are you thinking right now? Would you really tell them? <clears throat> if it was good, you would. Right? If it's not, then we transition to more spiritual sounding things. What if we're as liberal, liberal with our homes as we are with our hearts? Would everybody live there? Trash your place. A lot of people say, well, you don't understand, Pastor Cal, I'm just on the fence. Well, if you're on the fence, you're not guarding the gate. It's open, unattended. You know what comes in? Whatever it wants. Whatever Monday has to bring, right in. Guess what? Tuesday, right out. Wednesday, right in. Thursday, right out. Yeah, I have no control of the enemy. It's not the enemy. The enemy's coming in and out because you're not guarding the gate. The Bible says, take your thoughts, your heart, captive. Yeah, I just don't know if people like me. Take your thoughts captive. Renew your mind. Stop thinking the way the world thinks and start renewing your mind that you can think like Jesus. Amen. Proverbs 27, 3, and I just said it. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. You will follow your thinking. If you think stupid, you will not live smart. <laughs> no, you didn't get it. You're like, that's fun. Listen. If you think stupid, it doesn't matter if you're intelligent. It doesn't matter if you have a doctor's degree. If you think stupid, you will live stupid. No matter how intelligent you are. Because there's a big difference between intelligence and wisdom. Wisdom lines itself up with the word of God and lives a life for God. But until, you know how many smart people are in prison? You know how many people with degrees throw their lives away? Do you have any actors in Hollywood have a good marriage? Do you understand what I said? Because as you think in your heart is what you are, not what you, not what you try to <coughs> project. It's a condition of your heart. And what you put in will come out. The heart is the controlling and ultimate preference of your mind. People are literally walking around in complete denial of who they are. They think about junk all day long and then try to convince people with their mouth that they're someone special. If you think about godly things all day long, you will be godly. Amen? Amen. I don't have time to read my Bible. 
What else are you reading? Ooh. Man, if we read our Bible half as much as we are on Facebook. <laughs> Preach. <laughs> and I'm not anti-Facebook, but come on. We have time for everything that we want to have time for. You ever read something that bothers you and then you go to 17 different sources and read articles on it? You know what I mean? They're saying the same things, just different people. Like with all the stuff that's going on right now with the elections and stuff, it's easy. All you can do is go to any discussion, cut and paste it, and go to another discussion and lay it out. And the only things that change are the name and the people are saying the same things over and over. And I'm just looking for a solution. I'm all about the solution. I'm not ignorant of the problem. There's real problems. But man, at some point we have to go, there's a solution. Amen? Amen. I probably shouldn't say that from the pulpit, but I'm going to say it anyways. I am tired of the way that ISIS and Islam is trying to connect to social injustice in our world and trying to act like it's the same. Do you understand what I'm saying? Whether you agree with what Kaepernick's doing or not, that's your personal opinion and you're entitled to it. Everybody doesn't get to hate you because of it. You know, I served in the military and I served so where there's freedom in this country. And so if people want to protest passively, whether I agree with it or not, that's why I went and served in the military so people have a choice. Right. Standing on top of a car is not a choice. <laughs> but the thing that irritates me is that Kaepernick hooked up with a woman that's a Muslim, he's got Christian verses on his chest and he's engaged in everything else. I like the social justice aspect. I don't like that weird religious jump because they're the ones blowing up the world. That's right. I'm not going to sit down and act like it ain't because Islam, or sorry, ISIS, radical Islam, whatever you want to call it, go back to the homeland. If you want to know what Christianity is about, go to Jerusalem. If you want to know what Islam's about, don't go to a mosque in America. Go to Indonesia. Where they're tracking up and down through villages, cutting arms off women and children. Go see real Islam. Because I have a lot of friends that are is Islamic in America. Trust me, it's different. That's Islam light. That's Islam light. It's coffee talk Islam. Go sit around and talk about some stuff. But when you start, what's happening is they're trying to attach the real issues in our world, in our country. Racial injustice is a real issue. Whether you've seen it, experienced, or record, it is real. And we need to come up with a real solution, but we need them out of it. Right. Because they're not a part of our country right now. And they're not a part of what's going on. They're the ones that are wreaking havoc in our country. So I like, just keep that, just take your little ISIS stuff and move it over here so we can deal with our issues. Rant finished. <laughs> but can we really be a church and not care? Listen, if you open your gate, love of Jesus, come on, love in, love out. <coughs> love. Right? If you're hating somebody, gate's closed. No time for love. It's time for hate. Right? When you have the love of Jesus in you're like, man, this sucks. No matter how hard it is, I'm open the gate. I'm going to love some people. Jesus could love his enemy. I surely could love the people around me. Amen. Amen. And only one person has a hand on the gate. It's you. I don't care how you're raised. I don't care how you've been through. Everybody's been through things. And I'll tell you one thing that everybody in this place has in common, whether you recognize it or not. And it's pain. Everybody's been hurt. And everybody likes to redefine everybody else's hurt. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, they hurt, but not like I hurt. Trust me, I've seen people hurt. I've seen someone go through terrible things and hurt a little bit, and I've seen people go through little things and hurt a lot. Pain is pain. Stop trying to justify it. Job's in the Bible. He had it worse than all of us. From there on, we're all on equal ground. Right? <laughs> Have compassion. Because love always has compassion. If it's love in, it's compassion out. Always. Forgiveness. Right? Rejection? No, I'm not taking it. Because you know the next person that comes in, I'm going to accept it. Amen. Don't give anybody else access to your gate. Everybody's trying to give thoughts to help you shape your mind and open your gate. You make sure that Jesus has access. That's right.
this is interesting. What you really think about others defines you. Does that make sense? The way you talk about people really defines who you are as a person, not the things they've done. Because what they've done, they've done. But how you approach it and what you say defines who you are. Jesus came up on the prostitute about to be stoned or the adulterer. And what did he say? Ho, grabbed a rock. <laughs> no, but is that what you would do? Hold on. I'm sorry I'm not playing church today. Is that what you would do? She deserves it. Grab a rock. Yes? See, we, we love to read these stories and go, that's so awesome. And then when it comes to us, it's like, boom, Facebook comment, rock. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, here's a site where no one knows who I am. Rock. And we just start chucking rocks. And then we come back and we read, hey, you know what, kids? I read the story today of Jesus and the woman. And we share this. What? What are you doing? Look, we're really the answer. The church is the answer of the problem. Amen. And it comes to what you allow in your gate. Listen, do not let society shape your mind, but renew your mind according to the word of God and in Christ. Amen. Listen, don't let black people shape your mind. Don't let white people shape your mind. Don't let Republicans shape. Don't let Democrats. Let Jesus shape your mind. Amen. 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 And it doesn't mean we'll all agree. And guess what? That's still okay. Have compassion. Amen. Think about solutions. Think about what we could do to make it better. Stop sitting there arguing about what you don't like. Let's be the people. Let's be the church that goes out there and say, you know what? I believe Jesus is going to do something with this. I don't care who gets elected. It ain't like there's no great candidate. I hate to, you know, <laughs> if you're related to one of them. I hate to rain on your parade, but it's like, you, I've never seen an election before where people are going like this and going, well, I can't vote for them. Usually they have a choice. Now it's just like, who you don't like more? <laughs> Listen, it's not going to get any better in the world. Above all else, <coughs> guard your heart. Because out of the woods, the wellsprings of life. Love people in a real way. Have compassion for their pain, whether you recognize it or not. Care. See, Jesus didn't come to pick sides. He came to take over. Yes. Amen. Did you get that? Amen. Jesus isn't on your side. He's trying to get you on his. Amen. Amen. We pick sides. He takes over. You guys okay? <laughs> I haven't been fasting or nothing. I don't have any excuses. <laughs> I'm just, I'm so, as your pastor and, and friend... I'm so welled up with just frustration and seeing what's happened in the lives of the people, even in our city, and how because something happened, we don't have compassion on something else that happened to somebody. Look, I don't care who it is. You know, I mean, if someone comes in and their son got his leg cut open, I don't care who it is. Wouldn't you have compassion? Yeah. But why? Where does this whole "they deserve it" thing start coming in? Like, what is that? Because let me help you understand something. They deserve it as an Old Testament concept that if we got what we deserve, none of us would be here. Amen. Right. So be careful. I like verse says, when you point your finger at somebody, be careful because there's three more pointed back at you. Let's be the answer. Amen? Amen. I'm moving on. <laughs> Don't give the enemy control of your gate. The truth is, even when it's hard, some people you love have to be let in. You ever had people come over and you're not in that place? You know what I mean? And it's like, hey, I just want to talk with you. And you're like, you know, and you're like, okay, Jesus. You're like, okay. Just come on in. No, not all of you. Just one. I can like a little bit. <laughs> I'm having a hard time. We, we got to let down the walls. We got to ask Jesus, do I need to let this person in no matter how hard it is? Do I need to deal with the real problems in my life so they don't become my life? Mm -hmm. Can I really allow someone that I trust and you've sent to help me? I don't like it. I didn't even bring any food. <laughs> <laughs> but I need some help. I need some help with my thinking. I need some help with my life. Right? <clears throat> then the people from your old life go, hey, what you doing? Really you just come out with <laughs> Not today. 
guard the gate. God will never say don't guard your heart. He says above all else, listen. He's not like those friends you have that everything's awesome. You ever have those people? That is awesome. And it's like a football game. That is awesome. It's a car. That is awesome. You know what I mean? It's a battle. Like everything's awesome and you don't even know it's awesome anymore. It's awesome. It's like, dude, that's a piece of bread. It's just bread. Awesome. God's not like that. When he says above all else, he means above all else. Above all else, guard your heart. Listen to me. Offense is running rapid. Door shut. Remember what Dr. Ray said? Trust and forgiveness. I trust the Lord. In these elects, I trust God. Gates closed. Aren't you offended? You're offended. Gates closed. Amen? Amen. You want to pray for people? Gates open. And everybody will love to get you on their side. Everything you do is affected by your heart. I'm going to be talking about that next week as well. And I know this week's a little off, but I just had to, had to talk to you. But if we don't get it right, why would God bring anybody else here? If we're going to stir up offense and hate, why would God bring anybody here? We need to be able to show the compassion and grace and come up with a solution. We're not ignorant of the problem. We're not blind. We don't stick our head in the sand. But we need to come up with a solution what we can do to really, really, really make a difference. And if we don't know what that is yet, start doing it by, by just touching one person's life at a time that's involved in these things. Helping one person that's filled with hate and rage and bring them to a place of love and have compassion on them. Point number three. We'll get to more about the gates next week. This is really just you realizing. See, the enemy, the lie of the enemy is there's no gate. Some people don't even realize there's a gate. They just let whatever comes in. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about specific gates next week. But the most important is this. Open up your gate to Jesus every morning. Open up your gate to Jesus every morning. <clears throat> Not to some religious ceremony, but open up your gate truly. Of your heart, did you say, God, I need you today. I need you to help me become who you've called me to be. I need to be a person that injects love into a society that so needs it. Not ex- look, not just full acceptance. See, the world doesn't want real love. Because real love has correction involved. They just want acceptance. If you want that, go to a rape. Right? Everybody does drugs and sits around and touches each other. You can get acceptance there. But real love has correction just like with children. So true love of Christ has him directing and correcting us, not just accepting us. Amen? Or you didn't know that? (laughs) Jesus will accept me just as I am. You know what comes next? He's not going to leave you that way. 2 Chronicles 12, 14 is talking about Rehoboam, what terrible king he gave in to what everybody, all the people wanted. I could preach a whole sermon on that right now with what's going on in our country. But what he did was... He was called to do things that the Lord called him to, but he kept listening to the people asking, what should I do? What should I do? And he'd do it. And God, he was starting to show compassion on the people. And they said, no, what you need to do is put them in line. You need to put them in check. You need to strike back. And he did it. It started ruining the entire country. Second Chronicles 12, 14, it says, and he did evil because he prepared not his heart to seek the Lord. In any situation, you need to prepare your heart to seek the Lord first. Amen? When you read something that makes you mad, first seek the Lord before you seek opinions. A disciplined life starts with a disciplined mind. Don't think crazy because everybody else is crazy. Don't think crazy when crazy stuff's going on. David strengthened himself in the Lord. And this time you need to strengthen yourself in the Lord. You need to do it every morning. Revelation 3.20 says... Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we'll share a meal together as friends. We go, that's an awesome verse for unbelievers. This was written to the church. Every morning, Jesus is at the door to the church. Hey, all you gotta do is open the door and I'll come in and we'll eat together as friends, intimacy. Every morning. Open your heart to Jesus. Look, I don't care what church you've been raised in. Every morning, open your heart to Jesus and let him come in. 
and let them start to minister to you and prepare you for the ministry of the day. Because I promise you, whether you realize it or not, you're either missionary or you're on the you're the mission field. There's people out there that are hurting. God wants to equip you every morning to have a word for them. It doesn't mean you need to be a Bible scholar, but if you could at least issue some encouragement from the word of God. If you could speak a word of faith and hope in a country that's losing it. When you say things like hope, or you say things like make America great again, it only comes through Jesus. Amen? You can't just use key words. Because our hope has to be based in the truth. So let's open our hearts every day to Jesus. Look, I, I know a lot, I'm grieved. There's a lot of people, we've had a lot of people that have experienced deaths in their families in the past week. Um, deaths, illness, it's really struck in about the past week. My heart has just been really heavy. A lot of things are going on. Let's be people of compassion. Let's be people of prayer. Let's surround one another and strengthen one another in our times of weakness. See, if, if we help each other out when everything's going good, Jesus says you're just like the sinners. But what if someone else is having a hard time? Let's surround them. Let's love them. Even if we don't like them. Amen? Amen. Find a way to bless the people you don't like and see if you're not blessed. So my heart for you is just every morning, open the gate to Jesus. I'm your pastor, but I don't have the answers, but he does. <laughs> he has all the answers. And if we all let him in every morning, see if he doesn't do amazing things through us, our relationships and our lives. Amen. Come on, speak safe. Lord, we just thank you for this morning. And for all the things that are going on in our country and in our lives, Lord. Lord, we're not oblivious to the pain of those around us. Friends, family, struggling with the issues of our nation, with real diseases. Lord, I pray right now that you would just fill each and every person in this room, Lord. That there would be healings. In Jesus' name, spiritual healing, emotional healing, physical healing. If you've come into this room today and you have something going on in your body physically, I believe God wants to heal you today. He's willing, but you've got to open the gate. He's going to come in. He'll help you renew your mind if you open the gate. He'll help break off those addictions if you just open the gate. If you just start to trust him, see if he doesn't do crazy things in your life. Come on, he'll come and he'll cleanse your temple. He'll remove all those things that have been coming into your life and through your life. Just thank you, Jesus, right now. Just speak healing. Come on, I can feel the frustration and the anger in this room. I feel it just leave you in the presence of God. The tension. Lord, I ask you to help us get resolved, Lord, that there's something we can do to make a real difference in the people's lives around us, Lord. If we just help the people around us, Lord, and everybody did that, the nation would move in the right direction. Just strengthen us. Strengthen your church, Lord. Draw many to us. And we would bring them to you, Lord Jesus. We love you. It's in Jesus' name. If you're in here and you've never given your life to Jesus, I know this is not a normal Sunday service. But God wants your heart. If you're in here and you've never given your life to Jesus, the truth is the Bible says we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've all messed it up. But it said why we were yet sinners Jesus died for us. And then what that means is Jesus came, lived a perfect life. The Bible says he was tempted with all the things that we were tempted with. You don't think he was tempted to hate people? The people that were cursing God? The people that were rejecting him? The people that were condemning the Jews? The people that were condemning those that weren't Jews? He's seen it all and he came and he lived 
a blameless life. And they took him in that innocence. They beat him with a cat of nine tails. And they nailed him to a cross. He hung there for six hours, paying the price for your and my sin. He died that day on the cross. Three days later, he rose from the dead. And the Bible says, if you believe that in your heart and you confess it with your mouth, you will be saved. What does it mean to be saved? It means you get to go to heaven, and that's awesome. But it also means that Jesus will come live inside of you today. That things will change because you'll change. If that's you and you've never given your life to Jesus on account of three, I want you simply to raise your hand. You're saying, Pastor, I believe the word of God. I want to see my life changed. One, two, three. If that's you, just raise your hand. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Anybody else need to give your life to Jesus today? Maybe you're in here and you used to go to church and you haven't been. And I don't mean it's been a rough week. I know people are going through trials, but you haven't been serving God and you want to. Look, he's not mad at you. He loves you. He's been waiting your return. He's been desiring to be in your presence. If that's you and you need to rededicate this morning, just raise your hand. Anybody just need to get right? All you do is just pray together. And if you're praying this prayer for the first time, just believe with all that you are. Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. And I'm going to live for you all the days of my life. Thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Lord, we just thank you for this time. I pray that you just be with us this week, Lord. That we see ourselves as the answer. That we be a blessing to others. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go in 